Hey folks, and welcome back. This is lab number 11, and we are this week looking at file IO. And this is the ability to read and write information from files, either text files or binary files. Um, so this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick little example that takes in a file that has some grades in it and calculates the averages of those grades, um, which is kind of similar to what you're doing inside of your lab here. All right, so before we get started over in Replit, and as usual, if you go to that URL uh, up there, you'd be able to grab a copy of this and you can play with it yourself and fork it and make changes to it if you want to see how it works um, or play around with it. You're welcome to do that always. Um, so the, before I got started, I went ahead and I created a grades.txt file. I did that just by clicking add file and I called it grades.txt. And then I put some example grades in here. So you can see that the format of the file is I have a quiz number and then I have a colon, and then I have the grade on that quiz, and it's one entry per line. And so I have quizzes, and I also have tests in here as well. So the idea is we're going to read in this file, and we're going to process all of this data and calculate a quiz average and a test average. All right, so um, before we get started, let's go over here to the main window. All right, so we are going to start off, and we're going to create a stream reader object. Stream reader, we're going to call it SR equals new stream reader. And we're going to pass it grades.txt. All right, so the name of the file that you pass in here um, obviously has to match a file that exists. Since I'm in Replit, it knows automatically to look in the local directory where grades.txt is. So there's no problem here. But if you're trying to do this in Visual Studio, you might need to adjust where the working directory is and make sure that the file that you're trying to read is in that working directory. And if you don't want to do that, then the alternative is that you would specify the directory in which the file would be fully qualified, um, which would be something like this. If it was on my desktop, for example, it would end up looking like easily 13 um, slash desktop under this slash users uh, folder in C colon. So that would put the fully qualified name. If you're wondering why I'm doing two slashes, it's because a slash has a special meaning, which is to exclude the next character, but a single slash, um, double slashes like that will mean that it's not going to uh, mess with it. You just get the slash basically. Um, but this isn't an issue because I'm in Replit, so it knows that I'm in that particular directory. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do after I've created a stream reader is I'm going to use a while loop. So I'm going to say um, while not sr.end of stream. Um, and then I'm going to sr.read line, um, which I'm going to store into a string called lines. Um, so string, uh, let's go ahead and define that outside of this while loop. So we'll do string line. I'll go ahead and initialize it because sometimes it's picky about that. And here we have line equals that. All right, and what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to print that out just to make sure that I am actually getting the line correctly out of the file like I would expect. Um, and so we're going to get rid of this hello world. There it is. All right, so let's take a look at that and see if that compiles and I get what I'm supposed to get. Theoretically, I should see the content of grades.txt here on this little window whenever it compiles and gets there. And I don't. It says the typer namespace stream reader could not be found. Are you missing a reference? And yes, indeed I am. Uh, you're going to need to do using system.io. I want to say it's a capital IO in this case. And it is, and that compiled OK. So there we have it. That's the output of the file. So the next thing I want to do now that I've actually gotten that in is each time that it, the loop goes and it pulls in one line out of the file, I'm going to take that line and I'm going to break it up into its parts. So you can see that right here, a single line has the word quiz one and then the grade. But I also have tests. So I need to know whether I'm looking at a quiz grade or a test grade. And I'm going to do that with the com contains word, which is a string method that checks to see if a string contains another string. So I'm going to say if line.contains quiz, then we're going to deal with it as if it's a quiz. Um, so what I need to do is I need to take that line and I need to break it up based on the colon. So I need to break it into two parts. So I'm going to create an array of strings, um, which I'm going to call bits, and I'm going to do line.split based on a colon. 
And so that's going to give me the two different parts in each of the cells. So cell zero of bits will have the word quiz one and cell one will have a hundred. All right, so unfortunately they're both strings. So in order to get a number back, I'm going to have to convert that string into a number. So I'm gonna say int quiz grade is equal to int 32.parse and I'm going to pass it bits at position one, which is cell one of that array. And so that should give me my quiz grade. All right, before I went into this uh, array or into this loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initialize a bunch of variables. So I'm gonna say int quiz sum is equal to zero, int quiz count is equal to zero, int test sum is equal to zero, and int test count is equal to zero. So I have zero count uh, for both of them and zero um, sum for both of them. All right, so now that I've done that, I should be able to just take that grade and add it to the sum. So I'm gonna say quiz sum plus equals quiz grade, and then I'm going to say quiz count plus plus. All right, because I've seen one more quiz. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do if I get a quiz grade. Um, what happens if I get a test grade? So that's gonna be covered in this else. I'm just gonna cheat a little bit here and I'm gonna grab that and I'm going to copy it. Our blood is being weird to me today. Um, there we go. And I'm gonna paste that back in here. Okay, that did not copy for me. What are you doing, Replit? Copy, paste. Sure, okay, we'll type it again because that sounds like fun. Um, well, I do not know what is happening. There it is. Okay. Not sure what happened. My keyboard shortcuts have turned off. Don't worry about it. It's a personal problem. All right. So we're doing the same thing. If it's a test grade, we're still going to split based on the colon, um, but we're going to call this test grade and we're going to add it to the test sum. And we're going to do test count plus plus. All right. So after we're done at the end of this line, so after we have gone through this while loop, which is going through and pulling in a line and breaking it up and adding it to the appropriate sums, I should just be able to calculate all of my averages. So I'm going to say float quiz average is equal to quiz sum divided by quiz count and float test average is equal to test sum divided by test count. All right, and then I'm just going to print them out. And we'll hit run and we'll see what we get. So in theory, it should average the quizzes and average the tests. If we go back and we take a look at these and do a quick smell check here, um, the test should come out to about an 85. And these guys should come out to somewhere in the 70s, I think. And I am missing a semicolon on line 24. Indeed I am. There it is. All right. Let's see if that's the only issue. So yeah, I'd expect the test average to be around 85. I'd expect the quiz average to be in the 70s. And let's see what we get here. Yep, there we go. 79. That sounds plausible. One last thing that I forgot to mention is that anytime that you're doing file I.O., you should always be wrapping everything in a try catch block. You need to deal with your exceptions. So we're saying try up here, and I'm gonna remove that and just indent everything. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this is because that file may not be openable, it may not be there. It could be that there's all kinds of issues with that file. So you're always gonna to wanna to wrap all of this in a try catch. And you're gonna catch exception, or you can catch IO exception if you want to do that. Um, and what I'm going to write out is, um, I don't know why I typed IO there. <laughs> I'll call it E as usual, but you can absolutely call it anything you want. E dot message is going to be the actual message. And that's necessary because if I were to do something like this and I were to go over and rename this file such that it's not grades, it's grades with an X in it or something like that, 
then all of a sudden this program is not going to work, right? Because um, when it tries to read in that file, there is no such file. And it would be really nice if it told me that. If I had not put the try catch block in there, then it wouldn't tell me the program would simply just crash with an IO exception. Um, but now the program is still going to end, but it's going to say could not find the file because it's coming from this nice little print statement down here, um, which is a lot more helpful rather than just a simple crash. And so I'm just going to rename that back and rerun it again just to make sure that everything is still running. But um, that should fix the problem. And then when I run it again, I get my averages instead. So make sure you always use a try catch block around any file IO that you're dealing with. All right. That's it for this week. I'll see you guys next week.